Welcome back, everyone. Last week, we saw faithful Stephen stand up and speak boldly the truth of the gospel, despite serious opposition from an angry mob. In this lesson, willing to die, we will see some difficult things. So let's look for God's goodness and sovereignty in this account. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for giving us your word so that we can know and understand more about you every time we study. God, give us understanding of what Stephen went through and give us boldness to proclaim your name no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen. In Acts 7, we see the stark contrast between people who are faithful to God and people who are only serving themselves even if they think they're serving God. Stephen stood up for the truth of Christ when challenged by a violent mob. Can we honestly say we would do the same? Oh, we say we would, sure. But are we so fortunate to face only the mildest of criticisms for our faith and remain faithful? Stephen must have known he was in a dangerous position as the religious elite hurled accusations of blasphemy at him. Blasphemy was punishable by death, and he surely didn't help his case by declaring his vision of heaven and the Son of Man, Jesus, standing at the right hand of God. The crowd just could not with this. It was much easier for them to believe Stephen was lying and disrespecting the holy God than to believe he was given this special look into heaven and that Jesus was there. They pulled a toddler-style rebuke of Stephen, covering their ears and shouting over him to shut out the truth. How sad for them. As Stephen was carried out of the city to be stoned to death, people who were watching it took off their outer cloaks. Maybe it was warm or they needed to improve range of motion for their throwing arms, but for whatever reason, these people were not tentative about being there. They were settling in to watch a man die for his convictions. It's so amazing that in the middle of this terrible story for Stephen, we get our first glimpse of the man who would become the Apostle Paul. Young Saul, self-righteous and responsible. People let him watch their coats. The Bible explicitly tells us Saul approved of the execution of Stephen. Without Jesus, even a man like Paul is just lost and without truth. Following the events of this day, Saul took part in the wholesale persecution of the followers of Christ, dragging them to prison for their beliefs. I'm not sure the religious leaders calculated that scattering the believers across the region would actually prove a great help in evangelism and growth of the church, but it did because God empowers the faithful to build his kingdom no matter what. That same power of God will be shown mightily in Saul's transformation to Paul in just a few chapters. But for Stephen, this is the final chapter of a story well lived. He remained faithful and sought the closeness of Christ in his final moments. He asked Jesus to receive his spirit and for the father to forgive the sins of his killers. I honestly wonder with, with such similar thoughts being expressed in that moment, if Stephen had witnessed Christ's death and knew where his day was heading. His faithful example is still studied. Here we are. So we can know that following God will not always be easy, but it will always be worth it. As you study this section, remember that our keyword scatter has a literal meaning of making people separate and go in different directions. But that's the same thing a planter does to make growth in more areas. So if we are scattered at some point, it may be to make growth for God in a new area or context. If we hold on to the truth in our key thought, being willing to die for your faith means you hold it more valuable than your own life, then we can feel confident in any situation to live and speak boldly for Christ. We sometimes may feel the cost of following Christ and living in a way that honors him is too high, so we compromise. I'm reminded, though, of the meme where Ken Jong says, but did you die? And of course, I didn't. But I also remember that when following Christ, even if I did die, 
my obedience and commitment to Christ are worth more than whatever I was giving up to follow him. So much more. We must be as willing to live for Jesus as much as we say we are willing to die for him. I pray you have an amazing week of gospel opportunities or that you make those opportunities from every interaction you have. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying for our sins. Thank you for being a savior worth following no matter what. Give each of us strength to know your truth and proclaim your truth everywhere we go. In your name, amen. We'll see you guys next time.